Heksha Rohalan Rao. So in this recording, we're going to talk about the assumptions and the production possibility frontier for Heksha Rohalan Rao. We will try to derive one, first of all, the king-shaped production possibility frontier, and then we will derive the concave-shaped production possibility frontier per Heksha Rohalan model in this case, right? And you should bear in mind that in Ricardian model, there was only one factor. In Heksha Rohalan model, there are two factors. In Ricardian model, you had the constant opportunity cost. In Heksha Rohalan model, you may have varying opportunity cost, which is going to lead to the concave shaped uh, production possibility frontier. So there are a few normal assumptions. There are two factors of production, labor and capital. In Ricardian model, it was only labor. Supply of land and capital varies across countries, leading to differences in productivity. In Ricardian model, it was the, uh, the labor was, the amount of the labor could vary across the countries, right? Supply of each factor in a country is fixed. So in one uh, country, the amount of the capital and labor is fixed, right? So one is that there is perfect competition in the factor markets. Means that the factors are going to be paid their value of marginal products. Okay? There are two goods, cloth and food. There are two countries, domestic and foreign. And there is identical technology in both the countries. So means a given amount of labor and capital is going to yield the same amount of output in both the countries. So identical technologies. Uh, this assumption is needed in order to drive the main results of Heckscher Rollin theorem. Countries have identical tastes and preferences. And uh, the production function is like this. So there is cloth. And uh, it will be using capital which is going in cloth and labor which is going in cloth. There is food and it is using the capital which is going in food and labor which is going in food. Right. So here the uh, one thing which you have to understand is that, uh, that uh, there is the possibility of the substitution of the factors, right? There is a possibility of substitution due to more than one factor. So in Ricardian model, since labor was the only factor, how can you substitute it? You can't. But here you can substitute the factors also. You can use the different amount in the different sector, uh, in, in the different sectors. There, there is a substitution which can take place. Okay. AKC is the capital which is used to produce one unit of cloth. ALC is the labor which is used to produce one unit of cloth, right? So if you are producing, let's say, um, what do you call your KC amount of, or oh, sorry, C amount of, or the QC amount of cloth and QF amount of, uh, of uh, food, right? Okay, let me tell you AKF and ALF also. AKF is capital which is used to produce one unit of food and ALF is the labor which is used to produce one unit of food. AKC is how much of capital you are using to produce one unit of cloth, right? AKF is how much of capital you are using to produce one unit of food. How much of capital you are using to produce one unit of cloth? AKC. How much of cloth you are producing? QC. How much of capital you are using to produce one unit of labor, one unit of food? AKF. How much of food you are producing? QF. This is the total amount of capital which is going in the cloth production. This is the total amount of capital which is going in the food production should be less than equal to the total amount of cost. Similarly, ALC is the amount of labor which is going in the cloth production in order to produce one unit of cloth. Amount of labor used to produce one unit of cloth. 
how much of cloth you are producing q c amount of labor which is going in the food production or the the amount of labor which is used to produce one unit of food is how much a l f what is the total quantity of food being food being produced q f so a l f into q f is the total amount of labor which is being used in the food production a l c into q c is the total amount of labor which is being used in the cloth production should be less than equal to f should be less than equal to f suppose these unit requirements are given to you right unit requirements are given to you that is let me just copy it down also i can just put it here okay these unit requirements are also given to you right akc is how much akc is 2 right qc plus akf is how much 3 into qf less than equal to 3000 less than equal to 3000 then alc is how much 2 into qc alf is how much 1 into qf less than equal to the total amount of labor less than equal to the total amount of labor so it, this is the resource constraint for capital and this guy is the resource constraint for labor mm uh -huh. resource constraint for capital and this is the resource constraint for labor fair enough so you have qc you have qf right mhm uh -huh. okay let me just draw for the capital first so you have 2 qc plus 3 qf equals to through equal to 3000 2 qc plus 3 qf equals to 3000 so when qc is 0 3 qf is equal to 3000 qf is 1000 Mm-hmm. When QF is zero, two QC is equal to three thousand. QC is fifteen hundred. No, okay. And uh, what is the slope of this? Thousand upon fifteen hundred, which is two by three. No, which is two by three. Fair enough. what about the for the labor you have 2 qc plus 1 qf equals to 2000 when qc is 0 qf is 2000 hmm when qf is 0 qc is 2 qc is equal to 2000 qc is 1000 Slope is two thousand upon thousand, which is equal to two. Slope is two thousand upon thousand, which is equal to two. Okay. Now just think about it, and tell me if you are producing thousand units of QF. If you are producing thousand units of QF, right? So how much of labor you would be using right how much of labor you would be using here in this case so guys remember this <clears throat> that this black one is for capital and this green one is for labor okay if i am only going to focus on the labor and sorry or i am only going to focus on the capital cloth only sorry so if i want to produce maximum cloth from the capital from this constraint 
and I'm not using any resources to produce food, right? How how much? What is the maximum I can produce? This is the maximum. production of cloth using only capital no okay and if i want to produce cloth using only labor then i have to use this constraint that is 2 qc equal to 1000 2000 so qc is equal to this so maximum Production of cloth using only labor. Using only labor. Fair enough. Hmm. Similarly, if I want to produce just food, right, and if I use capital, so this is the maximum production of food using only capital 3 qf is equal to 3000 that is qf is equal to 1000 and this one this is production right maximum production of food using only labor mm -hmm. maximum production of food using only labor right okay so in a way don't you think that the maximum food production maximum food production can be only this Hmm. maximum food production can be only this note that economy is subjected to both the constraints so this is the feasible region no this one so when it is subjected to both the constraints so if you pick up this point uh, this is satisfying this constraint also and this constraint also Similarly, if you pick up this point, then this is satisfying this constraint also and this constraint also. So you can't use this point because this is, although this is satisfying the labor constraint, but this is not satisfying the uh, capital constraint. You can't use this point because this is, although it is satisfying the capital constraint, but not the labor constraint. Mm -hmm. So the maximum amount of food, what you can produce is 1000. So, if you produce the maximum amount of food, which is 1000, uh, here at this point, you are using only capital with excess labor. And if the maximum you can produce of cloth is 1000, because this is satisfying both the constraints, then here you are using only labor with excess capital. You want the full employment of resources. So one thing you need to understand is that economy is must produce subject to both the constraints. Economy must produce subject to both the constraints uh -huh. so at this particular point at this particular point this point is satisfying both the constraints 
and economy is going to use the full employment of resources. That is what the intersection point is. That is what the intersection point is going to be. So you can find out this intersection point. So you have two uh, things. You have 2QC plus 3QF equals to 1000, uh, equals to 3000. And from the second constraint, you have QF equals to 2000 minus 2QC. You can substitute this QF back here. Two thousand minus two QC equals to three thousand. Mm -hmm. So you have two QC plus six thousand minus six QC equals to three thousand, right? So this thing becomes this is three thousand minus four QC, or this is your QC out here. So QC is going to be what? 750? No? It is going to be here. Yeah, 750? Okay. The moment your QC is 750, your QF is going to be 2000 minus 2 into 750. That is 2000 minus 1500, which is 500. Huh? So the point is that you're going to use, you're going to produce 750 amount of cloth and 500 amount of food, right? You'll be producing 750 amount of cloth and 500 amount of food, right? And this is, this one, this looks very messy, I'm so sorry. This guy. Is what the production possibility frontier is. This guy is what the production possibility frontier is. Uh -huh. And the slope of this is going to be the slope of this line, the slope of you can you can make it like two segments A and B. So slope of segment A is what? 100 upon 1500, which is 2 by 3. And slope of segment B is what? 2000 upon 1000, which is 2. I mean, Although they are downward sloping, but we are assuming the, the uh, I hope that you understand this, that we are talking about the modulus here. So, let me just draw this once more for you. So, this is the way your PPF, it will look like. This is the way your PPF is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'll talk about the concave shape uh, PPC tomorrow with the ISO value lines and the definition of factor abundance and factor intensity in tomorrow's class. Thank you, Vita.